Welcome to Spine Academy. In this video, we're going to discuss the anterior cervical discectomy and fusion. This is an excerpt from a broader course in which we discuss on a high level many different types of cervical spine surgery. If you're interested in seeing the full course, we've left a link in the description. The anterior cervical discectomy and fusion is an incredibly powerful surgical technique that we use to address pathologies generally in the front of the spine. So let's start with an illustration to kind of give you a sense of what the procedure itself involves. If you look at this animation here, you can see that this is the front of the spine here. If you imagine that there's three levels of degeneration at these discs, for example, it might look something like this, where there's a disc herniation and some bone spurs. When we do an ACDF, we're removing the disc material on both sides. All of the disc material really is being removed. We remove the herniations pressing on the nerves and some of the bone spurs that are pressing on the spinal nerves and the spinal cord. And this creates a gap that we usually fill with a spacer. So we might use a trial like that to pick the right type and size of spacer and use it to fill that defect between these two blocks. We usually secure those blocks with a plate and the plate is designed to secure them or glue those levels together, usually we'll use screws to hold the plate to the vertebral bodies. And in this case, you can see between C5 and 6 that this plate is being used to secure 5 and 6 together. Now, when ACDF can be done at one or more levels, and here you can see if you took out the disc and put a spacer at the level above, the plate would be a little bit longer. And this time you would use six screws to secure the plate to these three vertebral bodies to fuse across these two discs. So an ACDF is generally done from the front and can secure two or three or, or more levels as needed. It would look a bit like this. And at the completion of the procedure, these levels would not move anymore. So as people move their neck afterwards, you can see that the other levels are really the levels that are gonna pick up the bulk of the load. That is one of the traits of an anterior cervical decompression and fusion. So now let's talk a little bit about the clinical situations in which we might use an ACDF. So if you look at a slice like this, an axial section, as you may be familiar with here, here you can see that this, this uh, person has a disc herniation with pressure on the spinal cord here, a little bit of pressure on part of the, the, the nerve rootlets over here going out here, but no real formal pressure on the nerves. And a, and a sagittal sequence might look like this, where there's this disc herniation here causing some pressure on the spinal cord. Now this might be a typical situation in which you would consider doing an ACDF. So going in from the front, going to this disc, you can remove the disc itself. And as that uh, animation showed, you can really remove the bulk of the disc. You would remove some of the bone spurs in the back here. That's one of the things that's unique about an ACDF is you can really do a fair amount of bone work, removing all the stuff that's in front, not just the disc, but even the bone spurs that are pressing on the spinal cord. And you can see here that the spinal cord is well decompressed. The spinal nerve would typically be well decompressed. Once the disc is gone, we would use different types of spacers, and there are different types. Some of them are made out of bone, either your own bone, something that we call autographed, although that's very uh, unusual. We don't do that that often anymore. It could be made out of cadaver bone. That's a possibility that still remains quite popular for some surgeons. And then there's synthetic types of spacers that you can use, things that are either different types of polymers or plastic, something called polyether ether ketone, or PEAK for short, was a very popular one for probably 10 or 15 years, and people still use them quite a bit. Um, more contemporary, I think, spacers are, are often made out of metal. That's an option as well. I tend to prefer a 3D printed metal. It's printed out of titanium to look like bone ultrastructurally. So if you look at it under a microscope, it has kind of pores within it. It's so-called trabecular or porous, so that when you put that spacer in, it's kind of very inviting to bone, so bone tends to grow into it. But what spacer is used by your surgeon will depend a lot on their own personal preference and maybe somewhat on the clinical situation. Regardless of that, most of the time people will put a plate on the front of the spine and the plate is secured with screws that tend to hold the plate together and to glue those levels together. So an ACDF is a procedure in which we do an anterior cervical discectomy, which is removing the disc itself, and fuse those levels together, which is gluing them together. And that's where the name comes from. So an ACDF stands for an anterior cervical discectomy and fusion. 
Some people will use the phrase as anterior cervical decompression and fusion, and those are generally interchangeable. This procedure, regardless, is generally performed with an inner body spacer, usually performed with an anterior plate, and the goal is to glue these bones together over time. And of course, getting the bones to fuse does take time. Now, if you go back to looking at that image from this section here and look at this disc herniation here, let's study a little bit more about what's done. So as I said in that, uh, before, you can remove the bulk of the disc material, remove the pressure on the front of the spinal cord on both of the nerves here. And if you do that, if you look at the other section, you can kind of see this is what it would look like. You could see here how we've removed some of the bone spurs, chamfered the stuff in the back here, removed some of the bone spurs here, some of the uncovertebral hypertrophy, you might call it. And we put in a spacer, and this is looking at the spacer kind of like a top-down view. The spacer occupies the space that that disc used to occupy. And you can see here that the spacers usually have a hole in the center, something we call a bone window. That gap is something that we'll often put graft material into. And there's different types of graft material, either cadaver-derived or your own bone or things like that that you can kind of put in there to fill that gap and help facilitate the fusion or the gluing together of those bones over time. So you can imagine doing that procedure at a single level, but if you look at an image like this, here you can kind of see that you can also do a discectomy at two levels. This clinical scenario is a little different than the disc herniation situation I, I talked about before. Here you can see that there's some disc degeneration that's pretty pronounced at these two levels between C5-6 and C6-7. Because of the disc degeneration, there's been some height loss, so there's, the discs are just not as tall anymore. There's some bone spurs here, and as a byproduct of that, this. Uh, person has some kyphosis here. You can see that the spine kind of leans forward at that level. That is pathologic. That's not normal for the spine to have that alignment. When you go in and remove the discs at these two levels, in addition to taking the pressure off the spinal cord and the spinal nerves and removing the bone spurs, you can also open up that space so you can distract the disc space or restore disc height. And here's an example of what it might look like afterwards. You can see that there's a spacer here and a spacer there, a plate on the front, and there's very nice restoration of so-called lordosis, where this is a normal curvature to the spine, unlike this situation over here. So an ACDF, a very powerful technique for one, two, or sometimes three levels. One of the principal criticisms that an ACDF has is that because you are fusing levels together, it tends to cause degeneration at the other levels. So let's look at an illustration here that will give you a sense of a two-level ACDF, in this case, performed between C4 and 6. And you can see as there's range of motion here that there's some degeneration at the level above. There's stress on the levels above and below. And as people live their life after an ACDF, there can be some accumulation of stress at these levels adjacent to a fusion. That can cause degeneration at those adjacent levels, and we call that condition adjacent segment disease or adjacent segment degeneration. And it is one of the criticisms of an ACDF, is it is felt to be a byproduct of immobilizing some levels. So you're basically shifting the burden of wear and tear and daily use to the remaining levels, and those tend to wear out just a little bit faster. An analogy that I use is if you have, say, six discs here and you fuse two of them, it's like having six tires on your car and then removing two of them. And as you continue to put mileage on those remaining tires, they tend to wear out a little bit faster. So again, because you're shifting the burden to these remaining discs, people can tend to develop degeneration at these other levels. And we call that condition adjacent segment degeneration. So if we look in summary at an anterior cervical discectomy and fusion and think about the characteristics of it, we can really enumerate them in a structured way. First, let's talk about the decompression. An ACDF allows you to do a decompression from the front. You can decompress both sides. So it allows you to do a bilateral decompression, right and left nerves, right and left side of the spinal cord, or right in the middle of the spinal cord, but everything in front of it. So bilateral ventral pathology. You can remove bone spurs and disc material. So if people have a lot of bone spur material kind of pressing on the spinal cord or the spinal nerves, that can be removed. All the stuff in the front can be removed that way. It's very good for removing pathology that is at the level of the disc. But we can't necessarily get behind the vertebral body with this procedure. It is ideal for disc level pathology, whether it's bone spur or disc. The next thing to talk about, is, uh, as I illustrated before, is that you can really restore disc height when you do an ACDF. Because you're going in from the front and removing whatever disc is there and you have complete control over those vertebral bodies, you can distract them apart open up the space and apply an appropriate size spacer to restore height 
and thereby alignment at one or more levels. When you fuse a level, you are stopping it from moving. And although that can shift the burden to other levels, there are advantages to that. When you fuse a level, it allows you to decompress it very aggressively, as I mentioned before, but it also arrests the progression of degeneration at that level. Because it's no longer moving any there, any, anymore at that level, and because you remove the disc in its entirety, you don't get another disc herniation. You don't have any further disc degeneration at that level, and you generally don't get more bone spur formation at that level because bone spur formation is felt to be a byproduct of motion, and degeneration is a function of use. Because that level is no longer moving, you don't really get any formation of bone spurs and uh, other pathologies at that level anymore. So an ACDF allows, for the, uh, to, allows you to arrest the progression of degeneration at the surgical level. There can be some degree of a loss of range of motion with the procedure, and it depends a little bit on every patient. When you take out a disc, you're usually doing it for pathology at that level. So generally that disc is not working that well to begin with. Uh, people may have already lost some degree of range of motion. When you do this procedure, you lose any, res any remaining motion that they had at that level, you are losing. So there may be some local loss of range of motion with this procedure because it is a fusion procedure. When we fuse levels, the belief is that we are shifting the burden of continued use to the other levels that are still working, and an ACDF may contribute to adjacent segment degeneration or having problems at other levels that could potentially cause symptoms or even require surgery down the road. Overall, an ACDF is a very common, very popular, very successful, and incredibly powerful surgical technique for addressing pathologies of the cervical spine particularly pathologies that are ventral to the spinal cord and the spinal nerves. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future content, we'd welcome them in the comment section below.